What's going on everybody? Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be going over the top 5 phones you can get from Cricut. Now while these aren't necessarily the absolute best devices you can get from the carrier, when it comes to the value that you're actually getting for the money, they definitely are some of the better choices. Now as always, if you do want to learn more about any of these phones individually, definitely check out the description where I will be linking to several other videos about each of them, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, let's get into it. So up first, we got the Cricut Ovation 3. Now, on one hand, this phone is definitely not spectacular in really any way, but if you're looking for a more basic entry-level device, maybe you're not doing a ton with your phone, so you really just need something that works and not a whole lot else. For the money, the Cricut Ovation 3 is definitely a great option. With this phone, we're getting a really large 6.82-inch IPS LCD display with a 720p resolution, a PPI of 246, and a 20.5x9 aspect ratio, so definitely a real nice large display here. Great for consuming content, for storage, this phone has 32GB of internal storage with microSD card expansion, so that's definitely a drawback, not a whole lot of storage. But again, if you are really just not doing a whole lot with your phone, then especially if you're using a microSD card, you will most likely be okay. For security features, the Cricut Ovation 3 does have face unlock, as well as a fingerprint scanner right here on the back. Let's give it a try. There we go, one more time. And there we go, real fast and responsive, no issues at all. For the camera setup here, up front, we got an eight megapixel selfie camera. Then on the back, we got a triple camera setup with a 13 megapixel main camera, a five megapixel ultra wide camera, and a two megapixel macro camera. So when it comes to features, especially considering, of course, this is a really affordable entry level phone, the camera setup we're getting here is actually pretty good. With an ultra wide camera and a macro camera, we are getting a pretty decent variety of features here. And when it comes to photo quality, although of course, seeing as this is definitely more of a low end device, you can't really expect too much. For a more casual camera user, the photo quality is definitely at least decent. To give you a quick idea of what it can do, here's some pictures taken with the Cricut Ovation 3. So overall, again, pretty decent quality here. Nothing over the top, but if you are more of a casual user, but you still want something to get a couple nice photos every now and then, this phone will at least get the job done. When it comes to RAM and processor, with the Cricut Ovation 3, this phone has 3GB of RAM with the MediaTek Helio A25 processor. Now, on one hand, compared to every other phone in this video, this phone is probably the slowest, but despite this, for more of a lower end device, the performance we're getting here is honestly not bad. For more basic daily activities like some light web browsing, social media, using the phone as a phone of course, and maybe watching a couple videos here and there, something like that, for that kind of activity, despite of course not being the fastest phone ever, the Cricut Ovation 3 is actually pretty decent, and overall, if you're really not going to be on your phone a ton, and again you really just need something basic to get the job done, you're most likely not going to be disappointed here. Now I did run a benchmark test on this phone using Geekbench 5, and here are the results I got. What I recommend doing is running this test on your current phone, and then comparing your results to these, and that's going to give you a better idea of whether or not this phone is going to be a performance upgrade for you. In general though, I feel like it's probably not going to be an upgrade per se for a lot of people, but again, if you really just need something for the basics and not a whole lot else, then for you, the performance we're getting with this phone is most likely going to be plenty good enough. For the battery, the Cricut Ovation 3 has a 4000 mAh battery that supports 10 watt fast charging, so honestly not the best battery ever. In fact, compared to every other phone in this video, this is the only one that doesn't have a 5000 mAh battery. But I will say in my experience, the battery life is definitely not terrible, and in general, again, you can probably tell, this phone is definitely not meant for heavy use anyway, so if you just need something that's going to last throughout the day, not a whole lot more, then while not having the best battery out there, it still will be at least okay. For the software, the Cricut Ovation 3 does have Android 12, which is not great, but also not bad. So if you're not too concerned about the software, but you still want something at least decently newer, then it probably will be perfectly fine. And another really cool thing about this phone is that unlike most phones in this price range, the Cricut Ovation 3 does actually have NFC. So if you like to use tap and pay, you actually can with this phone, no problem. So for a phone under $150, definitely more of a unique feature I'm glad to see. So in general, again, the Cricut Ovation 3 is definitely not an amazing phone by any means, but for the money, I do think we are getting some good value here. And if you're just looking for something for more basic activities, and you don't need stuff like 5G connectivity, a super fast processor, a really fancy camera, tons of storage, or a really large battery, and you really just need a phone you can use as a phone and not a whole lot more, then for the money, I do think the Cricut Ovation 3 is definitely a great choice. Up next, we got the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G. If you're looking for an affordable 5G phone that's just a really good all-around device, then this phone is definitely worth considering. So with the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G, we're getting a 6.6 inch 90Hz PLS LCD display with a 1080p resolution, a PPI of 400, 
in a 20 by 9 aspect ratio. So definitely a real good display here. And unlike most 5G phones in this price range, we are actually getting a 1080p resolution. So we got a real nice sharp image. So if you're doing stuff like watching videos, for example, where the image quality is a bit more important than with this phone, you will get a really good experience. For storage, the A14 5G is getting 64 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD card expansion. So on one hand, if you're really more of a power user, if you're someone who's constantly downloading apps and games and stuff like that, then you might want a bit more than this. But in general, for the average user, as long as you're mindful of what you're putting on your phone and you make sure to use a micro SD card whenever you can, then in general, 64 gigabytes will be at least acceptable and most likely you will be just fine. For security features, the A14 5G does have face unlock as well as a fingerprint scanner right here on the power key. So let's give it a try. There we go. One more time. And there we go. For the camera setup, up front, the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G has a nice 13 megapixel selfie camera. Then on the back, we got a triple camera setup with a 50 megapixel main camera, a 2 megapixel macro camera, and a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera. So unfortunately no ultra wide camera here, but it does have everything else and with the 50 megapixel camera, you can definitely expect to get some real good photo quality here. To give you an idea of what it can do, here's some pictures taken with the A14 5G. And yeah, for an entry level phone like this, definitely really good quality. So if you are looking for something more affordable, but you do like to take a lot of pictures, then I do think this phone will be a good choice for you. When it comes to RAM and processor, with the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G, this phone is getting 4GB of RAM with the MediaTek Dimensity 700 processor. So definitely not a processor we haven't seen before, but regardless, the performance we're actually getting with this phone is really good in this price range, especially for more basic activities. For what it is, the performance is definitely impressive. Here are the results I got on Geekbench 5. Definitely compare this to your current device. But overall, in my experience, this phone is definitely fast enough for basic web browsing, watching videos, some light mobile gaming, and stuff like that. Now, if you're going to be on your phone all day doing more demanding activities, you probably will want something a bit faster. But for more casual use, it will get the job done just fine. And I personally haven't had any performance issues. Now for the battery, the A14 5G has a 5000 mAh battery that supports 15 watt fast charging, so definitely a great battery here. For the fast charging, the charging speed is at least decent, it's really nothing amazing, but for the average user, you most likely won't have any problems. And of course, with a 5000 mAh battery, this is pretty much the largest battery you can get in a phone, or at least any Cricut phone, so you can definitely expect to get some great battery life and longevity here. If you're in a situation where maybe you're not always around a charger, but you still need your phone to last all day, in that kind of situation, a phone like this that has a really large battery is going to be a great choice. And then of course, down the road, as the battery degrades, which of course all batteries do, the A14 5G is not going to wear out nearly as quickly as say, the Ovation 3 for example, that has a much smaller battery. So again, if you're after a phone that has a really good battery, you're definitely not going to go wrong with the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G. For the software, like every Samsung Galaxy A series phone, the A14 5G does have Android 13. And in addition to this, with Samsung software support, you can also expect to get several other major updates in the future. Since this phone did start out with Android 13, I believe it will be getting Android 14, 15, 16, and 17. So if the software is important to you, then this phone will be a great choice. The A14 5G also does have NFC, so if you like to use tap and pay, you won't have to worry about that either. Up next, we got the Motorola Moto G Power 2022. Now, I know the Moto G Power 5G just came out like this week, and I will be getting to that in another video, but with the Moto G Power 2022, even at this point in 2023, this is actually a surprisingly good phone for the money. With this phone, we're getting a 6.5 inch 90Hz IPS LCD display with the 720p resolution, a PPI of 270, and a 20x9 aspect ratio. So. On one hand, the display is definitely nothing special. I feel like in this price range, every decent phone has pretty much the exact same specs. But that being said, it definitely doesn't look bad. Despite only having a 720p resolution, things do look pretty good. The colors and brightness are decent. And at 6.5 inches, the display is decently large. So if you're going to be on your phone a good amount, you will get a pretty good experience. And with the 90Hz refresh rate, the movement on the screen is a bit faster and smoother than your average entry-level phone. So it will feel a bit more premium to use. For storage, the Moto G Power 2022 is getting 64GB of internal storage with micro SD card expansion. So compared to most other 4G phones like this, this phone actually has quite a bit more storage. The Samsung Galaxy A03s, for example, is pretty much Samsung's equivalent to this phone. And unfortunately, that phone only has 32 gigabytes. Whereas again, with the Moto G Power, we're getting 64, which is double the space. And even if you want to compare it to something like the Cricut Ovation 3, again, remember the Ovation 3 only has 32 gigabytes. So if you're still looking for a more basic device and you don't really need a ton of different features or crazy good performance or anything like that, but maybe you want a bit more storage to work with. In that case, the Moto G Power 2022 is definitely worth considering. For security features, like the others, this phone does have face unlock as well as a fingerprint scanner right here on the back. So let's try it out. There we go, one more time. And there we go. For the camera, 
up front, we got a nice looking hole punch design for the selfie camera. This camera is 8 megapixels. Then on the back, we got a triple camera setup with a 50 megapixel main camera, a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera, and a 2 megapixel macro camera. So again, just like the A14 5G, unfortunately the Moto G Power 2022 does not have an ultra wide camera, but I will say the main photo quality is definitely really good for what it is. So if you like to take pictures, but you don't need a really high end device or anything like that, then in that case, a phone like this is definitely a good compromise. As always, to give you an idea of what it can do, here's some pictures taken with the Moto G Power 2022. And again, overall, for what it is, I am pretty impressed with the quality here. For stuff like social media and just general picture taking, I definitely think this phone will get the job done and, of course, if you're after really high quality, maybe 4K videos, an ultra wide camera, stuff like that, then obviously this is not the phone for you, but again, for more basic use, which is really what this phone is meant for anyway, you will get a pretty good experience here. When it comes to RAM and processor, with the Moto G Power 2022, we're getting 4 gigabytes of RAM with the MediaTek Helio G37 processor. In general, the performance with this phone is pretty similar to the Cricut Ovation 3, so while definitely not being a super slow device, if you're going to be on your phone a lot, definitely don't expect anything crazy fast. But at the same time, for more basic activities, you should get a pretty decent experience. Now for the battery, the Moto G Power 2022 has a 5000mAh battery that supports 10 watt fast charging. So when it comes to charging speed, on one hand, 10 watt fast charging isn't really that great but considering this is a really affordable phone that at this point Cricut oftentimes has deals for like under $100, it does at least get the job done. And with the 5000 mAh battery, like the A14 5G, with the Moto G Power 2022, you can definitely expect some great battery life. So if that is more of an important thing for you, then this phone is definitely worth considering. For the software, this phone actually recently updated to Android 12, which I honestly wasn't expecting. So that's great. Sure, it's not Android 13, but this phone originally came with the Android 11, and it is over a year old now. So in general, if you are looking for more of a basic device, and you don't really care that much about the software, then keep in mind, with this phone, it's at least decent. And again, it will get the job done. I personally haven't had any performance issues or anything like that. So overall, no real complaints here. Now, the only real drawback with this phone is that unfortunately, the Moto G Power 2022 doesn't have NFC. So if you like to use tap and pay, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to do that with this phone. So if you want something super entry level like this, but you do really want to use tap and pay and that's really a priority for you over stuff like the battery and performance, then you might want to go with the Ovation 3 because again, the Cricut Ovation 3 does have NFC. So you can use tap and pay with this phone. But in general, aside from that, if you want something that's honestly a bit of a step up from the Ovation 3, but you don't want to go all the way to something like the A14 5G, then I feel like the Moto G Power 2022 is definitely a decent compromise. On one hand, the Ovation 3 obviously does have some advantages over the Moto G Power, but in general, I feel like the Moto G Power is more of a solid device. And if you don't care about an ultra wide camera, but you want better photo quality, a bit faster performance, and a significantly larger battery, then between these two, I would say the Moto G Power 2022 is a bit better. Up next, we got the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G. Now, I know the A54 5G is out, and as you can see in my comparison between the two, it is technically better, but when it comes to the actual value for the money, I feel like the A53 5G is honestly a better deal. And as of the recording of this video, especially with Cricut, the A54 5G at this point in time really just isn't the best deal. But with the A53 5G, despite being over a year old and having a successor now, I feel like this phone does have a lot to offer. With this phone, we're getting a real nice looking 6.5 inch 120Hz Super AMOLED display with the 1080p resolution, a PPI of 405, and a 20 by 9 aspect ratio. So first of all, at 6.5 inches, definitely not a super huge display or anything, but it is a pretty good size and the image quality itself is really good. The 1080p resolution of course is giving us a nice sharp image, and with a super AMOLED display, the display itself is a bit brighter, and the viewing angles are also really good. So if you're outside in the sun for example, this phone is going to be a lot easier to see than pretty much any other phone we've talked about so far. So if you're looking for a more affordable phone that has a really nice looking display, the A53 5G is definitely one of the better options. For storage, the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G has 128GB of internal storage with microSD card expansion, so great amount of storage here. For the average user, you're probably never going to fill this up and even if you come close, you could always use a microSD card anyway. So if you are looking for a phone that has a ton of storage, you're really not going to go wrong here. For security features, just like the others, the A53 5G does have face unlock as well as a real nice in-display fingerprint scanner. So let's try it out. There we go, one more time. And there we go. So real nice there. 
then for the camera, up front, we get a 32 megapixel selfie camera, then on the back, we get a quad camera setup, with a 64 megapixel main camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, a 5 megapixel macro camera, and a 5 megapixel depth sensing camera. In addition to this, with the A54 5G, unlike the previous three, this phone can actually record 4K videos in both the rear and front cameras, so definitely great to see. When it comes to features, for a mid-range phone, the A53 5G has pretty much everything you could possibly expect, so if you are taking a lot of pictures, and you not only want good image quality, but also a nice variety of features too, then for that, this phone is definitely a good choice. Now here's some pictures taken with the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G. Overall, great photo quality here, and I feel like for most people, this is really all you're going to need. For stuff like Instagram, for example, Snapchat, sending photos to friends and family, and really anything else you might be doing with your camera, you really don't need to spend a thousand dollars on a flagship phone. You could simply get a phone like this and get maybe like 80% of the quality, but also be spending a fraction of the price. So in general, if you're looking for an affordable phone that has a really good camera, you're definitely not going to go wrong with this phone. When it comes to RAM and processor, the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G has 6GB of RAM with the Samsung Exynos 1280 processor. In general, when it comes to performance, on one hand, this phone is definitely not anywhere near flagship level, but at the same time, for more basic activities and even more moderate stuff like most types of mobile gaming, for example, it will get the job done just fine and for most people, you're probably not going to be on your phone playing Call of Duty all day or something like that. So unless you really need a super fast phone, for most situations, the A53 5G will be plenty fast enough. On Geekbench 5, here are the results I got, so definitely not bad at all. Again, be sure to compare this to your current phone, but in general, for your typical daily activities, you're not going to have to worry, because again, in most situations, this phone will be plenty good enough. For the battery, the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G has a 5000 mAh battery that supports 25 watt fast charging, so compared to the others, the charging speed on this phone is actually pretty good, so while still not being the best out there, in my experience, it does charge relatively fast, and of course, with a 5000 mAh battery, it does also have great battery life. Now, the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G does have Android 13, and with this phone, you can also expect to get several other major updates in the future. Now, since it is a year old, it's not going to get as many updates as like the A54 or the A14 5G, but I believe it will be getting Android 14, 15, and 16, which is definitely more than you can say for a lot of other mid-range phones. And this phone also does have NFC, so if you like to use tap and pay, keep in mind, with this phone, you can do that just fine. But one potential drawback I do want to point out here is that with this phone, unfortunately, we're not getting a headphone jack, which I don't know how many people actually use wired headphones so it may or may not matter to you but if you do keep in mind you can technically use them you just need an adapter which honestly really isn't that expensive in case you actually need one i do have one linked in the video description but yeah in general if you do use wired headphones a lot not having a headphone jack of course can be pretty inconvenient but in the grand scheme of things considering everything else this phone offers i feel like this isn't really that bad and then last, but definitely not least, in fact, probably the opposite for that matter, we get the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE. Now this phone is technically an entry-level flagship phone, but despite technically being a higher-end device, nowadays it's actually really affordable. And this is kind of the reason why I don't think the A54 5G is really the best deal, because that phone I think right now is going for $400-ish, whereas with the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE, Cricut does have some deals offering it for around 300 and even without those deals, if you don't qualify or something, you can easily get this phone on like Amazon for 329 So while there are definitely a lot of options out there, for the money, I feel like the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE is really one of the better options here. So with this phone, we're getting a 6.4 inch 120Hz dynamic AMOLED display with a 1080p resolution, a PPI of 411, and a 20 by 9 aspect ratio. So great display here. The image quality I think is even better than the A53 5G, so that makes it pretty much the best of all of these. Sure it's not nearly as big as like the Cricut Ovation 3, but side by side you can definitely tell the image quality difference. So in general, if you're not necessarily looking for a huge display, but you really do appreciate nice image quality, the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE will be a great choice for you. This phone has 128GB of internal storage, but unfortunately there's no microSD card expansion here. Now this is kind of too bad because on one hand, with 128GB, for the average user, you're probably not going to be filling this up anyway, but say you already have a micro SD card and you have a bunch of information on it, or maybe if you just have a bunch of photos and videos or something like that, then yeah, I could definitely see not having micro SD card expansion being pretty inconvenient, but in terms of general storage, with 128GB, I feel like most people will be perfectly fine. For security features, we do get face unlock here, as well as a nice in-display fingerprint scanner. As you can see, works really well. So there we go. And then for the camera, up front, we get a 32 megapixel selfie camera. Then on the back, 
we get a triple camera setup with a 12 megapixel main camera, an 8 megapixel telephoto lens, and a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. So in general, the camera setup here is definitely good and compared to all the other phones in this video, the photo quality here is really the best. Now one thing that might be confusing here is that with this phone, despite it being a much higher end device than all the others, the camera here is technically only 12 megapixels. But keep in mind, with a higher end device like this, the sensor is a lot higher quality. And because of this, even though it has a lower megapixel camera and no depth sensing camera, the photo quality is still quite a bit better. Now to give you an idea of what it can do, here's some pictures taken with the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE. And yeah, in general, you can definitely tell this is really a flagship phone. And compared to even the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G that was already good to begin with, the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE is on a completely different level. And while I definitely don't think this quality is really necessary for everyday use, if you like to take a lot of photos, maybe you spend a lot of time traveling, or maybe you're a content creator of some sort, or maybe you just like to take really nice photos. No matter what the case may be, if you really want one of the best cameras you can get for the money, you're not going to go wrong with the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE. And for video, this phone can record 4K videos in the rear and front cameras, so definitely nice there too. When it comes to RAM and processor, with the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE, we're getting 6GB of RAM with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 5G processor. So compared to the other phones in this video, this is definitely the fastest one and not by a small amount either. Really no matter what you're doing with this phone, whether it's more basic activities like web browsing and social media, or maybe you're watching videos all day or doing some high performance mobile gaming, regardless, you will get a good experience with the S21 FE. This is definitely a real fast phone, and personally I've even used it non-stop every day for well over a year now. And I really can't think of any time I wanted it to be faster, honestly. Performance wise, this phone is great. Sure there are phones nowadays that are faster, but for average use, the performance we get with this phone is really the upper end of what the typical user needs. Now here are the results I got on Geekbench 5, so definitely compare this to your current phone, but I feel like for most people, unless you have an older flagship phone or something, the S21 FE is most likely going to be a pretty good upgrade, and even then, I got rid of my S10 a long time ago, but I'm pretty sure the S10 was not much faster than this, if it was even faster at all. So in general, if performance is important to you, then the S21 FE will be a great option. For the battery, the S21 FE has a 4500mAh battery. This supports 25W fast charging. I actually forgot, this phone also doesn't have a 5000mAh battery. So yeah, not the biggest battery out there, but in my experience, it does at least get the job done. And I do recognize this can be kind of subjective because for me personally, I plug this thing in after I record every video. So even if the battery life was terrible, I probably wouldn't personally notice, but I've tested this phone when I've taken it on trips and stuff like that. And in my experience, it is still decent. Now, if you are doing some traveling or something like that, I definitely recommend getting like a wireless battery pack because keep in mind, the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE, unlike any other phone in this video, does actually support wireless charging. So if you are doing some traveling or something like that, having something like this is definitely a nice thing because even though this phone doesn't have the best battery life, in fact, three out of the other four phones in this video are actually better than this when it comes to the battery, having a battery pack like this definitely helps a lot. So yeah, the bottom line here is the S21 FE definitely doesn't have a terrible battery, but at the same time, especially considering it has features like a dynamic AMOLED with a super high refresh rate and a really powerful processor, that stuff is going to drain the battery a bit faster and combined with having a slightly smaller battery than your typical 5000 mAh battery in a Samsung Galaxy A series phone. If the battery life is really like an end all be all for you, you might want to skip this phone, but again, honestly, it's definitely not bad. But keep in mind, compared to something like the A53 5G or the Moto G Power or the A14 5G, it's not quite as good. But I will say, with 25 watt fast charging, the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE does charge pretty quickly, so that's always a nice thing too. When it comes to software, the S21 FE does have Android 13, and like the A53 5G, it should also be getting 14, 15, and 16. So in general, great software support here. It also does have NFC, so you can use tap and pay. And unfortunately, like pretty much any higher end device, the S21 FE also does not have a headphone jack. So if you do want to use wired headphones with it, you will need an adapter. But in general, despite definitely not being perfect, for what it is, considering you can get this phone easily for like three or four hundred dollars depending on the deal, if you really want the best phone you can get for the money, excluding stuff like refurbished flagship phones and really wild deals on Swappa for example that come up from time to time, the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE is really getting to be one of the best deals I've seen recently. But those were my top five phones you can get from Cricut at this point in 2023. In general, Cricut actually does have a lot of good devices, but when it comes to the actual value that you get for the money, these phones are definitely some of the better deals. Now once again, if you do want to learn more about any of them individually, definitely check out the description where I am linking to several other videos about each of them, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipa's Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you 
in the next video.